Thank you. I'm Erin Zenis. I'm with Fairlawn Rehabilitation Hospital here in Worcester. We provide acute rehabilitation services. I'm Pam Wendley, Atlas Box and Creating, located in Sutton, Mass. Uh, we're a specialized packaging company. Uh, Mary Ann Maynard, and I work with Pam, so same thing, Atlas Box and Creating in Sutton, Mass. Uh, Bob Gillette, Electrical Chemical, Dudley Mass, uh, contract packager for uh, cleaning supplies and soaps. You've had a grant before, haven't you? I have personally you, had you, a grant. I think the company's had a grant before. I, I leave. I can check that. If anybody's concerned about being in a company and not sure if they had a grant before, I can let you know that. But I think you may have. Had, the company may have. Had. I'm Peter Tamulis. I'm with the local community college, Prince Sigmund. <coughs> and we work with companies to help the process of the grants and also if we have the resources to uh, link to trainers that will do the training for you. I'm Gina Browski. I work with the DCU Center and with the Arena and the Convention Center. We're looking to train like our riggers and all the people that set up for our shows and whatnot. Jeff Turgeon again here with the uh, Central Mass Workforce Investment Board. And I should mention that as a local workforce investment board, um, we're able to give some recommendations to the state panel that reviews the uh, applications from within our region. So we do get a chance to see a lot that come through and we're always uh, available to offer some comments as you're, as you're putting an application together. So feel free to reach out to me uh, as well. Uh, my name is Ethan Brown. I'm a career counselor here for the, work, uh, for the Career Center for Workforce Central. I'm Teresa Kane. I work for the Polis Center for Social and Economic Development. We support people with disabilities here in Massachusetts. We have received a couple of different grants. We've done the hiring grant. And the, <laughs> we've done All right, I'm grant. glad to hear it. You get your $20. <laughs> and I'm here because actually we didn't get one. So I'm here to uh, brush up on why we weren't able to get that second one. Okay. Um, and I also, uh, we have a program. I'm a trainer as well. We do a program on disability awareness for companies. Excellent. I'm Joellen Andrews. I am working at Worcester Academy here in Worcester, and we are in private independent school grade six. <coughs> My name is Jacqueline Lynch. I am the acting director of corporate and community education at Roxbury Community College, and I came all the way out here because you guys don't have too much going on in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> you need to call me. I'll come to one at Roxbury. That's what Peter just told I will have. I go anywhere at any time for a cup of coffee. I'm a real cheap date. <laughs> So, but no, seriously, you, you get, let's talk, and I'll be happy to come do a session for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Deborah Baum. I work for Quality and Productivity Solutions. We are a consulting and training company, um, and we also, for corporations and for uh, public training as well, so we do assist companies with grant writing, and then we can provide the training as well. I'm Jackie Straub. I work for the Hearts Corporation. We're a manufacturer of automotive rolled goods. We worked with Mike a couple of times on a couple of grants, and it, it was pretty easy. And you were successful? We were very successful. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Lynn Dili. Uh, I'm working for a small company. The name is uh, Spare Metering Technology. Okay. I come here to, to learn what Thank we you. can get. Thank you. I'm Pam Reardon. I um, work for eClinical Works, which is in Westboro. We have about 700 employees at our site, so I still have my ears open for sure. And um, we create and um, maintain software that permits uh, medical offices or hospitals or even like the Department of Health in New York State with having um, their medical records in a cloud so that uh, it's part of Obamacare that, that uh, doctors and physicians can access their records easily, more efficiently, and um, it's a great company to work for. Thank you. And again, I'm John McCarthy. I'm the business service representative at Workforce Central Worcester. And uh, Jeff reminded me, um, as Jeff and our Workforce Investment Board uh, is asked to give feedback on um, workforce uh, training fund grants in our local area, um, I'm usually one of the first people that Jeff asks um, you know, for feedback on local grants as well. Oh, good. Thank you very much. So possibly after you're done, you know, if somebody here you want to talk to that can help you out, that, that's terrific. I always think it's so funny when they hear about this cloud. Yes. I don't know about you, but when I was working with my dad, when he's a bricklayer, I would hear every single time, get your head out of the clouds. <laughs> but now, you need, your, now you need your head in the clouds on a constant basis. It's amazing how the world changes. And this technology is something else. So, so thank you very much. So we had talked about the higher incentive training grant and... Um, we heard about the safety grant now, which you can have in conjunction with the programs I'm talking about. It has no bearing on it, <clears throat> and it does cover a lot of stuff. A couple of things about the safety grant 
is, is that you're relegated to the trainers in Massachusetts. They have a listing of trainers that you can choose from or use your own trainer on the safety grant, but they must be Massachusetts trainers. The Workforce Training Fund program does not do that limitation. You can use training providers from anywhere to do the training that you want to do on these programs. <coughs> so I wanted to point that out. So I'm going to talk about the Express program. I have a bigger program that you'll be interested in in terms of $250,000 worth of training. But we have a large grant that's worth $250,000 for customized training. But when we were doing the program, smaller businesses were saying, look, I, 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 I can't afford to ask for $250,000. I've only got 15 or 20 people in my company. I just want to do some limited training. Why can't I just come get some training and get some help with the training? So the Express program is geared for companies with 100 or fewer total employees full or part-time combined. So if you have subsidiaries in Massachusetts, you can't have a combined population of more than 100. So you can't have 20 people in Mass and have 4,500 people in the company across the United States and Europe. Basically, it's a Massachusetts company with 100 or fewer employees full and part-time combined. What we've said to the companies is this. We have approved into our database, you can access online, over 2,000 pre-approved training programs. All the community colleges in the state have programs listed. A lot of the training providers who help write grants and do customized training have taken their training and put it on this website. It's more like an off-the-shelf training program. So if I wanted to take a customer service training program or send my employee to that, I would go into the database, I type in customer service Massachusetts, I want to find five or 600 courses being offered. You're going to see how it's offered is it online, which we pay for, on-site or off-site? You can take your choice. Some companies will come to you. Other times you have to send employees. Or there's online training that you can access. <coughs> All right? There's lean and continuous improvement, customer service, communication, problem solving, um, supervisory training. There's Excel Word, spreadsheet data analysis, and all sorts of computer training on there. There's 80 courses on there for insurance agencies to take. One of the biggest uses of the program are hairdressers. I always say I should never pay for a haircut as long as I live. I've done thousands of dollars in hairdresser approvals. They get certifications. They can cut more hair and do more coloring. I dyed my hair white so I'd look professional. <laughs> so I just want you to I'm really black-headed. This is really just, just for show. No, but seriously, what this program allows you to do, ladies and gentlemen, is cherry-pick the training you want. You have a draw of $30,000 to use. We pay 50% of whatever is up there for training. So if that supervisory training was $1,000 for two days, you can take it as approved. The training's done. You pay for the training. You send me the bill. I cut you a check for 500 bucks. It is that simple. It's a 24-month program. You sign up for the program. It's an application. It's online. You apply whatever you want. With the first course, we do need, OK, Six weeks lead time on the very first application for, co for a trainer to get you a contract. As Devin said, you know, the contracting process is getting a lot quicker than it was before. It could be less than six weeks, but that's safe. So if you're going to sign up, I'm going to send John, who I hired under the, uh, uh, the OJT program, and he was a great fit for my company. I'd like to invest more time in him. I want to send him for some computer training or some machine training. And I found it online because they were on there. And I'm going to send him for about a week, and it's going to cost me $1,500. And off I go, I send him. No problem. He's done the training. I pay the bill. I get 50% back. But I now have the balance of the, the unspent $30,000 that's still sitting to use over 24 months. So now I send another employee two months later, somebody else two months later. You can send one employee to multiple programs. I did have someone ask me once, a woman said, can I send one employee to $30,000 worth of training? I said, I hope you're married. That's a lot of money to invest in one person. Because if I give them $30,000, it's a $60,000 program. Because you're paying half. So the maximum is $3,000 for any one course. If it costs $6,000, you get three back. You can't send the same employee to the same course twice. We don't pay for the same thing twice. That did happen. I had a person that was really enamored of, of a 12-month seminar program. And we caught it the third time around that it was the exact same program. <laughs> So we had to insert that in the language. You can only go once. You can send somebody else to the same training, but you can't send the same person twice. But the beauty of the program is this. You're not looking to do customized training. You're looking to do certain training to meet the needs you have at the time. 
for those who are familiar with ISO certified, a small company can use this grant and get ISO certified. All right, on a you know, taking one course at a time, one course. I take the first beginning course, I get reimbursed my 50%. Then I take course two, I get my 50% back. Because that's the way they think they need to operate it within their organization from a cash flow standpoint. You can have this grant and the hiring incentive training grant at the same time and the safety grant at the same time. All right. So this is a nice program for small businesses. Now, we add courses all the time. If you called up the community college and saw a course you wanted to take, they'll put it on there. Same thing with the other grant companies and writers. They, they all have courses on there. All right. My favorite story is the gentleman who called me at 9 o'clock at night. Because after 9 o'clock, my wife hides my cell phone now. I can't find it. She leaves me little notes now to find my cell phone. Because I'll take calls at midnight. You know, I don't know why. I just do that. So he's from North Carolina sitting on his porch having a beer. I could barely understand his accent. You know, and Nick was having trouble listening to me because he told me I had an accent. I couldn't understand him. So, but we did communicate. Well, what was interesting is that his company worked with pool installation companies in Massachusetts. All these courses that they were offering to these companies, these small mom and pop places, were about 100 bucks a pop. I explained to him, you know, if you get these things approved under the Express program, these companies can send people and get it do done for $50. They needed pump repair, pump installation, uh, handling these new devices, whatever it is dealing with pool installation, this company taught that. So he was pretty excited because now the selling point for this particular vendor, hey, $100 course for 50 bucks, the state will give you the money back. You get paid within 15 business days following receipt of the information that the course was paid for. Now in all these programs, people must be paid while they're in training. That's the rule. So if you're going to send someone out to training, they must be paid. That's why we got into approving online training because online training allows you to control stuff better and there are a lot of vendors who will come to your operation to do the training you're looking for. Okay? So this is a great program for a small business of 100 fewer employees, easy access, you apply when you want, $30,000 worth of grant money to do the training. And when it's over, like the higher incentive training grant, you can do it again and again and again. I have companies that do a limited amount of training, the contract's over, they come back and they do some more training. I've had companies that have gotten close to a million dollars in this program since 1999. They keep coming back for more training. Again, this is not a one-shot one deal. You're, you can access these programs on a continual basis. How many people are 100 or fewer here? All right, well, there you go. I hope you look into this. Again, if you have any problems with this, you're just going to call me. If you're dealing with a training provider that's coming to your company on a regular basis, have them call me. I'll try to convince them to get on the program so that you can use them. All right? Why wouldn't? I, I don't understand why they wouldn't do this. I mean, it's obviously a good selling device. Okay. So yes. Um, so we <coughs> purchased something called um, Biz Library, and we're paying probably the same as others. Mm -hmm. You pay for it, and it's online. Mm -hmm. um, so we could probably stop paying for that and utilize maybe this and you would have to get they would have to become an approved vendor to get that training program approved once it's approved you can take it it has to get approved how does a company get approved they need to be in business for two years off of the training before and it's a basic type of training you can get off the shelf either generic to an industry or generic customer service yeah. generic insurance industry safe training for buying and selling insurance Obviously, generic to the insurance industry. Computer training, generic, Excel, Word, and that type of stuff. So, again, the thing is to get the training provider. Some people won't do it. I don't, they, I don't want to deal with the state. I don't, but fine. The key is that the company gets their money first before the, the, the vendor gets their money before the company gets reimbursed. Mm -hmm. That's how we protect the training provider. I want a check, copy the, copy the cancel check showing that you paid this money to this provider, then I cut you a check for 50%. All right, but yeah, so, so you got to get. Or we either get the vendor. Right, you got they, on this approved, on this program. They have program, to apply. Or we use this program, that this website that. Or for other training that you want to do, but but for that training, they must you must have an approved vendor on the website in order to utilize okay. any training. Okay. So the training must be pre-approved. Okay. So when you go into the website, you'll see all these pre-approved training programs. There'll be a company name. There'll be a, a number attached to the application. What the cost is. And then when you fill out the application, you just tell me how much you're going to pay and how much we're going to pay, and it's 50%. So our vendor may already be there. Just might check be. It first, maybe if they don't, then, and then have, have, them, have them call me. Have them call you. Have okay. them call myself. <laughs> have them do Thank it. You. Okay. 
Question, yes. Does it cover uh, yearly training subscriptions too? No, probably won't do subscriptions. It's got to be actual training taking place, mm -hmm. okay? And that vendor has got to have a product that they, in fact, training with. And what we cover is just the training, by the way. Books and materials aren't part of this thing. What I'm looking at is when I get a syllabus from a training provider, I want to know what's the training taking place, what skill sets are going to the employees as a result of the training. It's not mandated by the state or federal government, and we'll approve it. Okay, so that, that is a particular thing that someone's going to get a skill set they don't have, they're going to get through training. So I don't pay for room and board and travel and that type of stuff on that. Yes? May I just answer my question, but I was going to ask, uh, some of the programs that would potentially be covered under the industrial grant, such as CPR and right. Aid, are there any vendors? There may be a few of those up there that you might find, but that's why I like the safety grant, because if you can't find it, chances are they'll cover it. It might, there might be some forklift stuff. Now, the thing about the state I love my job is I, can, I always get to say that no is not a word I have to use all the time because with the state, no is never no. I know that sounds weird. Yeah. I mean, you could say I need two licensed forklift operators required by law, but I want to train 15. Well, in that particular case, why wouldn't I help you train 15? So this, the issue on mandated for us is that if you need to do the training to run your business, it's required that they have this in order for you to do what you do, we don't pay for it. But a lot of times, people expand the training beyond what's required because it's a benefit to their company and more skills for the employees. So we always look at that situation as well. So you may find some of those on there. Okay? Thank you. Yes? Just one other question about some of those um, skill sets. You know, I um, can't think of the names offhand. You get them all the time, you know, they're day-long seminars. They're in Worcester, or they're usually at the colleges. Do you know what, you know what I mean? Are those types of yeah, things wh wh Whatever is up, whatever okay. gets on there, you can take. Yeah. If someone's all, if it's a seminars. If it's a training that's program okay. that's giving skills to the employees. Management Association. Yeah, those, you know, AMA you get them. skill path, their yeah. time management. Their yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're going to find, I think you'll find some cover. of those on there. Okay. But again, if not, again, if this is something someone goes to, there is a curriculum and something's being taught. There's a skill set being obtained that's, you know, readily uh, seeable from the, from, the from the curriculum they're sending us. Okay. We'll approve it. Okay, because okay. those are like $300 we can't afford to send our employees. So you get 150 bucks back. <laughs> right. right. So that's why I like this you program for small business. You the connection of having skill tap applied, yeah. but yeah. you're yeah. helping so many other people. Well, I've seen them in our grants before, and I know that yeah. name. It's a name that I've seen before. So I, I, you, you would check with them for us. I saw another question. Yes, no? Okay. All right, great. We're all set? Comfortable? I like people being comfortable. Okay, too. We're going to move on now. So this was the express program. You can have it with, in conjunction uh, with the other grants. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to talk about is the general program grant. This is the big one. All right. This is how the whole thing started. When I go back to the mission and priorities, this is key to this particular grant. The difference is that this is a customized grant of up to $250,000 to train your employees to give them new or advanced skills. So it's not like the hiring grant. I'm not gonna have you get money to teach someone to do the job for which they were hired, all right? The, the general program grant is saying to you as a company, what type of training do you need that you cannot do on your own? So we don't pay for internal trainers. What, cannot, what you, can't you do on your own that's gonna change, prove, or correct issues or problems within your business? open new markets in your business, help you control your costs, and increase the skills of your workers. If you can make this case, we'll give you money to pay for all the training, all of the training, including manuals, booklets, and supplies related to the training. All right? That's why this is so different. You can use any training provider that you want to do the training. Companies of any size may apply. My first grant, when I came on board, these were paper applications at the time, mm -hmm. right? How far we've come. It had grease stains on it. It was from a garage in Western Mass. Gentlemen had applied because the new, new emission controls were coming out. These new machines were coming in. He said, in his application, I believe that if I open another bay, I'm gonna be able to hire a couple of people to do more inspections. I know from my record keeping that every three or four inspections I do a repair because someone can't pass, I fix it there. I also know and track my records that when I look back that out of those three or four repairs that I do, I've been getting some new customers because they like the work that I did. I didn't overcharge them. 
I'm going to bring my people in on Saturday and pay them. I've got to rent this equipment and hire a trainer. I believe that as a result of the training, I can keep these two people on. I'll increase my repair work and I'll bring in new customers and increase my book of business at the end of the year by maybe 2 or 3%. Why wouldn't we give him a grant? That's a great grant. New skills for the employees, improving of his business, expanding opportunities, all right? And he was able to track and measure that, okay? Conversely, IBM, great company, struggled to get a grant. The problem with that was is that they did eventually get a grant. They were having trouble coming up with something new and different that they didn't do on their own because of their huge training on. I was heavily involved in that because I was the guy that kept denying their grant. And then I had to go meet with them afterwards. They stopped serving me coffee. <laughs> Well, what we discussed in terms of time is, that, is to get the idea down. And this is where this grant, I offer a workshop on this grant. I will teach you how to write it. I offer a free workshop all across the state. It's on the website. I break down the application, explain how it works. If you've been denied, we can take a look at why you were denied and why you want to reapply. If you've never written a grant before, I'll help you write it. You know, you don't have to come to the workshop, but it's free and open to the public where I try to say to people, look, this is what we're looking for. So in the case of IBM, when I was talking with them, I said, look, we need to look at this totally differently. So let's, let's play a game here. Here's like $250,000 in cash right here. Tell me something you've always wanted to do in terms of training, but you know it's always been balked at or questioned, was too expensive, didn't make any sense, was out of the box, we don't want to go there. We came up with a training plan of something that this gentleman wanted to try in terms of advanced supervisory skill sets for their employees that they really didn't offer. And it really concentrated heavily on bringing people up the ladder to become supervisors, promoting from within. They got a $250,000 grant. So when we talk about the general program, and I do this workshop with people, trying to get you into the mindset this is a training grant. You can pick whoever you want to do training. You can do multiple training programs within a grant. That's not a problem. You can have computer training, English as a second language training, project management training, get your lean and continuous improvement, get an ISO certification, do communication, whatever it is you want for the population you want to train. Bring in the providers to give you the cost of that training. You make the case and tell us why this is going to help your business and improve worker skills. We will pay for all the training over a 24 month contract. Let me stop here. Questions? All right. So there's a couple things that have happened along the way. And this is something new. English as a second language is something that we're really pushing because this is obviously a vehicle for people to move forward in terms of skill sets, not only in their personal lives, but within the organization. And it takes a long time to do a good ESOL program. Companies were saying it's a lot of money because people must be paid while they're in training. So the advisory panel has now said, look, it will allow a 50-50 match on that, which means that if I'm going to train a bunch of my workers in ESOL, and they agree to take a hit on part of the training, so I'm going to train them for the first hour at the end of the shift. At the end of the shift, I, I pay them for an hour, and they're going to stay for another half an hour on their own time. That is allowable under this grant. It was never done before, but it's just a further incentive for companies. Now, you need to get a commitment from your workers if you want to do this because in this day and age, obviously, getting people to work late without being paid, unless it's really, really important to them, it's going to be tough because they have second jobs or they're running home. I mean, my wife worked as a, as a caterer and, you know, that she would drop the kids off at the neighbor and she'd go to this function hall and I'd rush home at the end of the day to do supper. We did this for like five or six years. I could never work a second job. I mean, she was working her job, which was dropping off the kids. And we have that problem today with everybody. So working with the employees is important. Letting them know what this is going to do for them in terms of advancing their ability to work within the company and to move forward in ESOL. Now, if you can afford to take the whole thing on, that's even better because now they're being paid while they're in training. But they have allowed this match. OK? Clear on that? I hope I muddy the waters. Yes? So what do you mean by 50-50 match? So OK, this is the story. Let's just say I'm going to take 10 employees. Okay, and um, <clears throat> if I take the number of hours they're all going to training, I take their wages and multiply times the number of weeks they're going to go to an ESL program, and it's $20,000. Okay, all right. I say to them, look at, 
I can't afford to have you off the job for all of those hours. I'm willing to pay for the training, but can we split it that half of it will be paid time and half of it will be on your personal time? So they're not being paid by the company. That's what I'm talking about, split time. Traditionally, this grant is a one-to-one -one match. So let me explain that. I'm going to request a grant for $30,000 to get ISO certified. What's my match? What's my contribution to this grant? Well, I'm paying people while they're in training. So I take the number of employees that I have